strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will ca cause you to recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. So we see who the Holy Spirit, his titles are comforter. Amen. That's his title in your life. He's our, he's our comforter. He's our counselor. Amen. So what does a counselor do? Well, a counselor will listen to you. Amen. So he's going to listen to you. Any of your need that you have, any problem that you have, he's going to listen to you. He's your helper. Hallelujah. He's our helper. So, and anything that you need help with, he's going to be there. Amen. I love the scripture that says that we don't have a high priest who can't sympathize uh, with our weaknesses. Right. Jesus was tempted in all things that we were. Amen. And so he says he's our very present help in time of need. We can go boldly to the throne of grace because our, he's our very present help in time of need. <clears throat> he's our intercessor. How many knows that the Holy Spirit's praying for you daily, constantly Amen. praying for you, to intercede for you on your behalf? Yeah. He, he's, uh, you know, the Bible says that Jesus was the ransom for us. Um, to intercede just means he's praying on you for your, on your behalf. Amen. If you have a sickness, he's, he's praying to the Father for you. Amen. He intercedes. He's your advocate. Advocate. Uh, he, he's for you. He's going to uh, testify for you. Yep. Amen. He's going to advocate for you. Yes. Amen. He's going to go on your behalf. Yep. Amen. Yep. He's your strengthener. Yep. He strengthens us. Yep. Amen. He's our standby. He's ready to, when, when times get really hard and we feel like we can't do it, he's ready to pick us up and say, no, you can do it. We're going to get through this. We're going to do this together. Amen? One of my favorite poems is the, the guy walking on the sand, and, he, and he's walking through life, and he sees two sets of footprints, and it's the Lord, and it's his. And uh, you know, he sees all these images about his life, and he looks back, and occasionally he sees just one pair of footprints. And so he said, Lord, during my toughest times, why did I only see one set of footprints? And the Lord said, it's because during those times I carried you when you couldn't walk. And I just love that. It's a great indication. It's a great yeah. depiction of who the Holy Spirit is in our life. Yep. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our, uh, our standby. He's, our, he's the one who strengthens us, who tells us to continue to go and to keep going. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just like the Father takes the role of a provider and a protector of his family, the Holy Spirit takes the role of a counselor in your life. He takes the role of a helper and an intercessor. So it's important to know him. Amen. If you were talking to somebody and you didn't know they were a counselor, would you, uh, would you tell them what was going on in your life? No, you don't, you don't know they're a counselor. Right? It's important to know him because if we don't know him as our counselor, we're not going to go to him for counsel. Amen. Or we're not going to know that he will strengthen us when we ask. Or when we feel alone and no one's on our side, we won't know that we have somebody who advocates for us, who stands next to us. Amen? So it's important to know the person of the Holy Spirit. We talked again about who, we, who he is uh, the last couple weeks. But we want to know him. Amen? He's, he's inside of you. He's all around you. He's upon you. Amen? And so we want to know him. We want to know who he is. We want to get to know uh, all about him because he knows all about you. He's with you whenever you, he's with you all the time. Amen. If you're just starting at a new job and you don't know anything about the job yet, but you're training with somebody who's been there for 30 years, you're going to be pretty confident that uh, you're going to get some good training, aren't you? Yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit knows everything about everything. Yeah. Amen. He's like the trainer who's been there for 30 years. But even more, he actually does already know everything. He doesn't just think he knows everything. He actually knows everything. Amen? He knows the answers to your test that you're taking. He knows how to get out of financial trouble for your specific situation. He knows how to best parent your children. Amen? We can go to books on parenting. We can look at different things, and that's good. But we should also seek him first. Amen. How, Holy Spirit, what do I do in this situation? Yes. He might lead you to a book. Yes, he might lead you to a series or something on parenting or on finances. Yes. 
for your situation, but go to him first. The, the, the word says, um, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. Every, what is that? Everything we worry about, right? Which in life, everything could be a worry. You can worry about how your children are going to be raised, how they're going to grow up. You can worry about how your finances are going to be. Uh, you can worry about if you're being a good Christian. You can worry about where's my next meal going to come from. Amen. Where are we going to live? Uh, we can worry about uh, how the school district is going to educate our children. We can worry about the upcoming election. Amen. We can worry about uh, multiple, multiple things. I know for Angeline and I, even, you know, when you send a kid to college and now they're not living with you anymore, it's, you can worry about things like that, yeah. that they're going to make good decisions, that they're going to yeah. go to class or they're going to go to work, yeah. that uh, they're going to wake up on time, mm -hmm. you know. But the Holy Spirit is with us <clears throat> and he's teaching us all things yeah. and he's giving us calm, and he's giving us strength, and he gives us peace. Amen. There are times when we look back at a situation, and we see God's hand over that situation. But in the moment, unless we know who our help comes from, we're not going to have the peace that we could have had. So we might be worried about something, anxious about something, and we look back and say, wow, look how the Lord took care of that, and praise the Lord he does. But in the moment, we might be anxious, like I said, we might be worried, we might be nervous. But if you know who the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, you can have peace even in the storm. You can have peace in the situation. You can have peace when things don't look very good, when your finances don't look very good, when it looks like uh, your children or sometimes your parents, hello, uh, are going in the wrong direction. You can have peace because you know that the Holy Spirit is your helper. Amen. If we don't know who the Holy Spirit is in the moment, we're not going to have the joy that we could have. We're not going to have the comfort that we could have. Amen. So again, that's why I think this is very important to know the Holy Spirit. And then again, we go back to John 14, 26. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. If you were working on a project and your partner already knew how to do the project perfectly, you'd be able to trust his or her judgment. Since the Holy Spirit already knows everything, we can trust Him when we ask for help. We can trust Him to help us in every area of life. Doesn't matter what it is, whatever we want to know, He's going to teach us and reveal things to us that we don't know. And, and specifically, and we're going to get through it a little later, specifically things in the Scriptures. He's going to reveal things to you in the Scriptures. Amen. Another role of the Holy Spirit in our life is He helps us make decisions. He helps us discern. John 16, 12 says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when, the, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. Amen. So He guides us to the truth. He guides us to the truth of His Word. He guides us to the truth of who we are in Christ. Amen. Amen. He guides us to the truth of what matters in life. He guides us to the truth of, uh, of who our enemy is, who our adversary is. He guides us to the truth that we are already victorious. Amen. 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 Everything that he tells us is from God. He gets it firsthand from God and gives it to you. Amen. Yeah. Even revealing things to us that can only be known to him. And I think the best example in the, of this is 1 Corinthians 2. And I've, I've quoted some of these scriptures a lot, um, but I want you to get a revelation of the passages in 1 Corinthians 2, starting in verse 7, and just even studying it out for this message. There's some things that I haven't even seen, and I've looked at it a lot, and it's just amazing how good God is in our life. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 2, verse 7. The Bible says, But we speak the wisdom of of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So he's talking about this hidden wisdom, this wisdom of God, and he says we speak it in a mystery. This hidden wisdom 
uh, which was ordained before the ages, hallelujah, but it says for our glory. So this wisdom that God has, um, that Paul is, is talking to the churches, this wisdom was for our glory. It was for us. And it says, nobody knew this wisdom. It was a mystery. He said, because if they would have known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. So you know it has to be pretty good to change their mind. This wisdom. We go to 1 Corinthians 2.9. It says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. So this is a recital of the Old Testament scripture, Isaiah 64, 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, nor has I seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. And remember, the disciples didn't have the New Testament to read. Amen. They had the Old Testament to read. So that was their Bible. That was the scriptures, amen, that they, that they used, that they studied, that they used to show who Jesus was. They used to show the Holy Spirit that Jesus had given. And so they, they cite the Old Testament a lot because they were, those are the only scriptures. Many people will stop here and say, this is where you get the phrase, well, God works in mysterious ways, that there's this, this mystery in, in God, that there's this hidden wisdom, this mystery that we, don't, we can't even know because eye cannot see and ear cannot hear um, nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared. And we think, wow, I wonder what God's prepared for us. Yeah. But we know, we can know what God has prepared for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Kind of like, you know, that God works in mysterious ways. Kind of like we're still blinded to the things that God has for us. But we have to keep reading in verse 10. So if we go to 1 Corinthians uh, 2.10, it says, But God has revealed them. Amen. So what has God revealed? He's revealed verse 9, amen? And he's revealed verse 7 and 8. He's revealed the wisdom. He's revealed the mystery, the hidden wisdom. He's revealed the things that previous we have not seen, had not heard, haven't entered into our heart. <clears throat> he's shown us. He's revealed things that he's prepared for us. And it says he's revealed them to us through his spirit. His spirit, capital S, that's the Holy Spirit. He reveals things to us through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And it says, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Amen. That's why it's so important to, under, to know who the Holy Spirit is so that we can get revelation in real time of what God is saying to us in the New Testament. Yep. You, you can't fully get revelation of different things in the New Testament without the Holy Spirit's help. Because it says that, we don't search all things. Our spirit doesn't search all things. But the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, he searches all things. Amen. And he searches the deep things of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So he's revealed to us. He's revealed the mysteries that, that uh, what he's prepared for us who love him. Yeah. For anyone who believes or will believe. Yeah. That's what he means when it says who love him. Those who believe. Yeah. The believers. Amen. So the things that were previous mysteries are now revealed. So God is not a mysterious God. He doesn't work, quote-unquote, in mysterious ways. Amen. Amen. Now, people could argue with me on that. Um, what I mean by that is that he's not, uh, he's not uh, doing something to hurt you right. and making it for your glory. Yeah. That's not a mysterious way that God works in. We can be amazed, like, wow, look how the Lord worked in that. And it can be amazing, but it doesn't have to be mysterious. Right. Amen? It yep. doesn't have to be, have to be mysterious. That's right. God is an open book on what he's done in your life and what he wants to do in your life. Yes. He's not going to hold. The Bible says in, in James 1, 17, that um, every good and every perfect gift comes from God, the Father of life. There's no variation and there's no shadow. There's no shadow or turning. In him. When you think of mystery, I think of the shadows, right? But there's no shadow in God. Amen? He's an open book. He, he wants you to know what he has in store for you. Amen. He wants you to know what he's already given to you. Yes. Amen? Amen? But it doesn't say that these things are just revealed by reading the scriptures. It doesn't say 
uh, that they're just revealed by praying. Those are important parts. But he's revealed these things through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, amen, has, has, knows all things, searches all things, the deep things of God. Um, and so he's revealed these things through the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know that you have the Holy Spirit and specifically can have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, again, which is a direct line, a direct communication to God, a lot of things in the New Testament are still going to be a mystery, right? Because if we don't know that, just like those that said, we're not even aware there was a Holy Spirit, right? So if we don't know the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, then those things that can only be revealed by the Holy Spirit are still going to be mysteries to us. You know, and I think you see that a little bit in the body of Christ where, um, you know, there's, there's, you know, churches that don't believe in the Holy Spirit or don't like to talk about the Holy Spirit. Maybe, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it's, they don't understand um, or it's kind of a, a weird baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, it seems kind of foolish to them. I don't know. But you see it where so many people have so much head knowledge about the Scriptures, which is good. You want to have head knowledge. But that's where it stops. Well, the Bible says the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. Yep. Amen. If we haven't had knowledge about the New Testament or about the Bible, yep. we're just scratching the surface of what we could know. Yep. We're just scratching the surface of how we could be full yes. in Him. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And why? Why are a lot of the things going to be a mystery to people who don't know the Holy Spirit? Again, because the Holy Spirit is the one who searches. The Holy Spirit on the inside of us is the one who uh, reveals, amen, searches the deep things of God. And not only searches, but if the Holy Spirit knows all things, then the Holy Spirit knows the deep things of God, amen. Tells you how deep God is. The Holy Spirit who knows all things continues to search, continues to get things for us, amen. It'd be like the teacher giving you the answer sheet to a math test you have to take, but you don't use it, Amen. So if you have the answer sheet right in front of you, and the teacher said it's okay to use, but you have it right here, and you think, uh, I don't know what this is, but I don't need it, and it's a really hard test, well, you're probably not going to get a very good grade, right? So you haven't heard the material before at all. But if you use the answer sheet, that's who the Holy Spirit is to us. He's our answer. Amen. He's our provider. He provides the answers to us. Amen. So let's keep reading. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2.11. It says, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So again, talking about the things that God has prepared for us, talking about the blessings that God has for us, the things that he's done for us, it says that no one can know the things of God except the spirit of God. Well, again, the spirit of God lives on the inside of us. Amen. So if we know who we have on the inside of us, if we know what his role is in our life, then we can know the thing to God. Now it says in verse 12, Now we have received, not the Spirit of the Lord of the world, but the Spirit of who is from God. We have received the Holy Spirit, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Amen. Are you getting revelation of this yet? I feel like this is even better news than verse 10, because it says, if we read in verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who's from God, that we might know the things that are going to be given to us, that have already been given to you, the weapons that he's given you, the peace that he's given you, the joy that he's given you. Amen. Amen. He's, he's revealed things that he's already done. So when I, when I look at verse uh, verse 10, um, or when I look at verse 9, I think about the things that God has prepared. I always thought about the things that are in store for me. But as you read, and you read into verse, verse 12, it actually reveals things to you that you've already been given freely by God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other mystery, the hidden wisdom for believers, is that we aren't just waiting for the things God has prepared for us, but that we're getting revelation of what we already have. Amen? You're getting a revelation of what you already have. So as you learn about the Holy Spirit, as you speak to the Holy Spirit, 
you're going to just continue to get a download of everything that God has given you. Yes. What came in the, in the uh, crucifixion and the resurrection? Yeah. What did Jesus do? What did he actually do for us there? Yeah. Blows your mind. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You have so much more power and authority given by God than we can even know yeah. with our human mind. Yeah. Amen? I mean, you have in, in, in the physical realm, you have, you have physics, and you have things that are just laws that can't be changed, yeah. um, like a dead man being raised to life. Right. Right. Amen. Like um, the sun take, going through its course all the time. Yeah. Well, in the Old Testament, the sun stopped. <laughs> right. Right. That's not physically possible. What other things that aren't physically possible can God do in your life? What other things that you think are impossible that would never happen is God doing or has done right now? Amen. Destroying cancer cells. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yes, Praise the Lord. Thank you. All these things. We want to understand that it's not just for us in the future. It's for us from what's happened in our past. Yeah. That he's already done these things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That we might use the power and the authority already given. That we might get an understanding of the peace that he's already given to us. You know, to be spiritually wise means that we know what we already have in Christ, in our lives. Amen. Could you imagine if our lives, uh, our lives, if we caught the revelation of what we've already been given? If we just got this revelation just in one area, even if it's just in peace? Man, I mean, if, 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 just thinking for myself, if I just got a revelation of the peace that's already been given to me, and, I just, and that was the only revelation I got, I'd feel like, man, my life would be set. But there's even so much more than that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Provision, love. Yeah. Think about all the fruits of the Spirit. Just think about all these things that you've been given. You've been, you've been given patience yeah. in every situation. You've been given peace in every situation. Yeah. You've been given joy already in every situation. Amen. And we're gonna, we continue to grow those things, but you've been given it. Amen? Yeah. To those who don't love Jesus, these things are prepared for them, right? But for those of us who love Jesus, they've already been freely given. Amen. We already have them. They're already in our life. Amen? Amen. But as soon as those people enter a relationship with Christ, everything that God has prepared for them is already available. It's like at the bank when you deposit your paycheck. It's available immediately for use, right? You don't deposit your paycheck and then have to wait three months, amen, to use it. Or you don't have to wait to use it until you get a better understanding of it. No, it's available for use immediately, amen. Could you imagine, like, I don't really understand my paycheck. And the bank's like, oh, we'll just put a hold on it for you until you do. No. We can use it right away, can't we? It's available for use immediately. We don't have to understand the peace of God to, um, to gain it. We don't have to understand fully the peace of God to use it. We don't have to fully understand the love of Jesus for us to be in it and to receive the gift of salvation. But again, it's not through our head knowledge that we know these things. To grow and mature as in what's been freely given to us, we need the Holy Spirit. He's the one who teaches us. He's the one who reveals these things to us. Amen. He's our helper. Yep. And then let's go to the last one in 1 Corinthians 2.13. <clears throat> it says, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Amen. Amen. So to know the spiritual things, to know the spirit realm, which is even more real than the physical realm we're in right now. To understand and to know the spiritual realm and comparing spiritual things with spiritually, it's only by the Holy Spirit. Yep. Only the Holy Spirit yep. can, can show us those things. Yep. You know, there's many examples, and I don't have any today, I, I could bring some, but many examples of ministers or evangelists that uh, was in ministry but didn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. And had good ministries, you know, could go so far, but once they got baptized in the Holy Spirit, how they talk about how their ministry, they got how much revelation they got in the Word, how many people got saved through ministry, how many people got healed through ministry. 
it just takes everything to another level. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's only so much we can know with our physical brains, with our physical minds. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes I'll get a revelation, and I, like, I can't even believe I got the revelation. It's like, how? I don't feel like I have the brain capacity to understand that. But no, what does he do? He teaches us. Amen. He continues to open us up to his, to revelation. Open our heart. You know, it's not a mind thing. It's a heart thing. You know, we don't, these revelations we get from, from God aren't just in our mind. No, he gives them to our heart. Right? The Bible says, out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water. Amen. I can't explain that, but I know it's out of my belly. I know that it's what the Lord wants for me. Amen. So again, it's only through the Holy Spirit we can get these spiritual revelations. So now let's go to Ephesians 3. We're going to start in verse 1. We're going to read the whole chapter, kind of. Break it up a little bit. Because this goes right along with 1 Corinthians 2. So we start in Ephesians 3, verse 1. It says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles... If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me for you, how that by revelation he has made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly already written, by which when you read, uh, read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which is in other, age, in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his Gentiles, um, of his promise in Christ through the gospel, of which I became a minister according to the gr- gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. So he says a little bit of what he said in 1 Corinthians 2, right? He talks about this mystery. He says that there's been this mystery, and he's already written about it. Um, and when they read, they might understand his knowledge in the mystery of Christ, again, which was not in other mages ages known, made known to the sons of men, but has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy prophets. And this is another part of the mystery, that the Gentiles, us, everybody say us, Us. the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. That's another mystery. So all the things that God has prepared for those who love him, for the seed of Abraham, right? Now the spiritual seed of Abraham, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ. So again, this promise isn't something that's necessarily out in the future, but all the promises that God had for us that have been revealed to us that we have already been freely given. Amen. And for me, the most exciting one is the promise of eternity. Ooh, that's so good. Amen. When we become a Christian, there's a promise of eternity. We, I'm not going to talk about it in here, but um, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, you know, bears witness with our spirit that we are, that we are children of God. Right. Amen. Another role of the Holy Spirit in our life, that he yeah. bears witness. Again, he advocates. Yeah. He says, no, no, Randon's good. He's part of your family. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But Gentiles should be, we're fellow heirs. And it says, uh, verse 7, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Mm -hmm. Amen. And just think, you know, now we know that, that the Bible and that Christianity is for everybody. But back then, that was was taboo. (laughs) That that was unheard of. Because the Jews were the special people of God. Right? And so there's this mystery, there's this revelation. I'm sure even Paul was like, wow, really? Peter, same thing, wow, really? Went over to Cornelius' house, right? But it was this huge revelation. Eternity wasn't just for the Jewish people anymore, but everybody who loves Jesus. Everybody. Man, you know, I saw that just before, during uh, worship, I saw that vision of, of God on his throne and Jesus at his right hand. And, you know, just even when I opened my eyes, there's the flags in the front, and, and um, Gabriel was banging on the drum. I mean, just amazing. The worshipers and everything. And I just thought about this triumphant entry um, into his throne room, into the throne room of God. And I just thought, Lord, you're so amazing. We can honor you. 
I want to honor you today. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. All right, let's keep going. Ephesians 3.8. <clears throat> Paul speaking again, he says, To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, again, the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Amen. Therefore I ask that you do not lose heart at, the tri at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. So let's break this down again. <clears throat> so he talks again about the fellowship of the mystery that's been hidden from the beginning of the age to the intent that now the manifold wisdom, manifold means many, right? The much wisdom. Right. You know, for the Lord it's infinite wisdom. Amen. Of God might be made known by the church. And I love this, that this, this wisdom of God, this eternal glory that we have, these things that he's prepared to us might be made known by the church, but to the principalities and the powers. So all the angels know that you have eternity in heaven, that you have an eternal glory. Amen. All of the angels know what God has prepared for you. All the angels know what you've been freely given. And that doesn't say just the heavenly host, but all the principalities and powers. A lot of times, principalities and powers are talking about the dark principalities and powers. So it doesn't include just the angels. It includes Satan, his demons. They all know what God has in store for you. He's revealed those things to Satan. He's revealed those things to the principalities and to the powers. And again, in verse 11, according to the eternal purpose, etern you have an eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. How did he accomplish it in Jesus? Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Amen. He went to the cross for us. And at that moment, it was accomplished. All the things that were mysterious, that, that weren't revealed yet, um, he was saying, I'm going to reveal these things to my people. I'm going to reveal these things that were, that were hidden at one point. I'm going to reveal eternal glory. I'm going to reveal... Salvation. I'm going to reveal redemption. Yep. I'm going to reveal the provision I have for those who love me. Amen. And then it says, because of this, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Mm -hmm. Again, we have the access. When Jesus uh, died on the cross, when the, when the veil was torn from top to bottom, we became, um, the Holy Spirit became accessible to us. The Holy of Holies became accessible. The Ark of the Covenant became accessible to us. Amen? Yes. The purpose of the revelation is so that the manifold, which in this case just means many, but infinite wisdom of God, would be known by us and to all the principalities and powers in heavenly places. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the angels, the demons, Satan, they all know that we have this power and authority through Jesus Christ. Amen. Satan knows he's defeated. Yes. Amen? Satan knows that you have power and authority over him Amen. by Jesus. Yeah. But we need to know it. We yeah. need to know it. We need, that's, again, the Holy Spirit reveals these things to us. Yeah. I can talk about it up here, but if you don't get a revelation by the Holy Spirit where you're sitting, you're not going to fully know. And, and I shouldn't say fully um, because there's so much to know. <laughs> Amen. There's so much to be revealed to us. Yeah. But you're not going to know it on another level yeah. if the Holy Spirit himself... Uh, if you don't allow him to reveal it to you. Amen. Let's go to verse 14. <clears throat> and this is a powerful prayer. This is a prayer that Paul prays for the church. This is a prayer that I've prayed morning and night um, before for months. And I remember just doing it and seriously getting revelation that I never um, expected to get. So this is amazing. For this, work, for this reason, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you. So again, this is talking, he's, he's praying for this revelation um, of, the, of the things that were revealed to the church. Amen. Um, that he would grant you, according to the rich of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, 
So all these things you already have. So you, you're already rooted and grounded in love. Yep. Amen. It says that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints. Again, this word comprehend. What is the width and length and depth and height? Yeah. He wants you to know it all. Yeah. Amen. And then verse 19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Again, how can we do that? Know a love of Christ that passes knowledge? Yeah. With our heart. Amen. I mean, if it passes our earthly knowledge, if it passes what we can comprehend in our brain, well, it has to come from the heart. Yes. Right? Yeah. Reveal things to us in our heart. That's why you see, you know, when you, when you talk about gifts of the Spirit, when you talk about words of wisdom, you talk about words of knowledge, that doesn't come from up here, right? It comes from here. So if I were to, you know, um, pray over Pastor Dave and, and I was speaking into his life about something that happened two years ago, and he's like, well, I never told him that. How did he know? Well, that's not coming from here. It's coming from here. It's coming from the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit is revealing to me. Amen? So we know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So all these things that the Holy Spirit is revealing, all these things that we've been freely given. Amen. Amen is so that we can be filled, again, with the fullness of God. Yes. The fullness of God. And then he says, To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. So because we, have already, because we already have what God has freely given to us, Paul is praying that for the church of Ephesus to receive this revelation. Amen. I want you to know the love that Christ has for I want you to know the width and length and depth and height. Amen? I want you to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. Yes. I want you to know um, that he can do exceedingly abundant things in your life. Yes. That he has done exceedingly abundant things in yes. your life. Yes. I want you to know what Jesus really did for you on the cross. Yes. And it's all through the Holy Spirit. He's saying this is the mystery. This is what's been made available. Now you just need the revelation of it in your life. Yes. This, is, this is available to you. Get the revelation. Lay hold of the revelation. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, get to know Him. Even if you're not even sure where to start, just say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Holy Spirit, help me. Because we can talk with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an inanimate object. The Holy Spirit is a person. And He talks back. He communicates with you. Amen? But I just encourage you to do that. If you don't know, if you're unsure, just, Holy Spirit, just reveal yourself to me. Yes, I want to know you more. Yes, Amen. Yes, Even you. things, you know, at the end of this whole thing, I, you know, I want to um, do a call for baptism of the Holy Spirit. If anybody wants to get baptized in the Holy Spirit today, I'd love to pray with you as well. But it doesn't even take that. If you just go home and you say, Holy Spirit, just reveal yourself to me. Holy Spirit, I want to be baptized in the, in, in, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He's going to provide that for you. Amen. If you need guidance, we'd be more than happy to speak with you, but yeah. let the Holy Spirit guide you. Amen. I can tell you things. I can inform you about what it means, but you have to, the Holy Spirit has to be the one to show you and reveal it. Amen. Amen. Talk to him. Ask him to reveal what you already have in Christ. Yes. Again, I could tell you all day long, but we can only get revelation of spiritual things through the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Next time, I think we might talk a little bit more about some of these things, um, but I want to start getting into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I'm excited to do that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's important. And I can't even say I understand everything about it. I don't understand everything about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't understand everything of what has already been given to me, but I'm excited to go on the journey with you. <laughs> I'm excited as I study to see what God reveals to me Amen, about, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, about what he has in store for me, what he's already done for me. Amen. Because I know it's going to help me. I know it's going to make me more appreciative. I know it's going to make me bold in the Lord. Amen. And so I'm excited. I'm excited to do that. So, like I said, after service day, if anybody wants to, like, hey, I, I think I want to get baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I just don't know what it is. We're going to be talking about it in the next couple of weeks, but um, I would be happy to pray with you as well this morning.
you, did you get something out of today? Amen. 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 Oh, you're so good, Lord. You're so good. Amen. Hallelujah. You can stand with me today, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you revealed things to us that we didn't previously know. We thank you that through your Holy Spirit, you're, you're opening our, the spiritual eyes, the eyes of our heart, to understand the width and the length and the depth and the height, that so we can know the fullness of you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here today. Thank you for being in us and with us and upon us. Just start praising the Lord this morning. You don't have to pray in tongues. Hallelujah. You are worthy of all praise. You are here today, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into our lives. We welcome you into the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you that you're just, again, opening us up to, to be revealed to us what the Holy Spirit, who He is in our life. That you're opening us up to, to understand. You're, you're opening our eyes, Lord, and opening our minds to, to give us the revelation and the knowledge of it you have about us, what you've done in our life, what you're going to do, Lord. And so even today, I thank you for blessing everybody here. I thank you that, you're, that they can walk even 10 feet taller knowing who they are, knowing that they have an advocate, knowing that we have a helper, that we have a comforter, that we have an intercessor. Hallelujah. We're not in this life alone. Hallelujah. That you stick closer to us than a brother. So we give you praise for that, Lord. And um, we're just so thankful, so thankful for who you are. And what you've done for us in yes, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well,